All right, guys. Uh, look, I had a comment. And I, I found it yesterday online. On one of my videos, uh, a gentleman said that I did not show the accumulator being built on a 4L60E video that I did. So, you know, I know that I, I built, I, I know that it's got videoed somewhere. Uh, I may have edited it out. I'm not really sure. So what I'm going to do, I told him I had a, another video. I sent him a message back and said, look, I, I'm I built another transmission. I'll shoot a quick video of the servo. Okay? So basically, I'm going to just do a real quick rundown of the servo, the components of the servo, what they actually do, and just quickly build this one to put in the case. This servo fits a 700R4. It's the same servo basically in the 700R4 as the 4L60E. Uh, I'm not really sure what the first year of a 700R4 was. I think it was around 85-ish. However, they made it's, it's had the basically the same servo, their servo design forever. Uh, the same servo in the 4L60E, so it's it's identical. Basically, you got a return spring. This let me get this in the camera, make sure I get it. This right here is the actual pin that pushes the drum. That's what this is. This here is spring loaded. This piece here, heavily spring loaded. This is actually used as a accumulator for third gear. When the transmission applies the third gear clutch, it uses this spring and piston to actually push the pin off of the band, but it also uses this as an accumulator. This right here is the apply part for second gear. Just the apply piston. This is where the piston actually rides. It's a two-part servo. The piston, this goes in the case just like so. This is another piston. This, what it does is take hydraulic pressure through this hole here, through this pinhole, feed hole, and comes out the back of this. This piston lives in the cover. So whenever the oil comes through here under pressure and applies this piston forward, which applies to band. Second gear, it comes here and well actually it comes in here and applies this piston for second gear which applies the exact same band that's the basics of the servo I'm gonna quickly just show you how it seals and what to look for in a bad servo you have these sealing rings This has a. This is for your little cover in the case. This right here is for uh, second gear. It houses the piston for second gear, and it's sealed to the case with a red O-ring. Fourth gear piston. This is a normal seal. This seals to the case with a blue o-ring. Right, uh... Okay, the pin, get in the camera. This has an e-clip. A retainer for the spring. A spring and the apply rod. Okay, have a housing here. Let's see. All right, guys. I'm sorry about that. You know how phones are, and you have a business, you 
kind of tend to have to answer them. All right, what I normally do, I'm gonna put this in a press. It's got a little clip here. I'll show you how to do this. In fact, I'm gonna move you to the press so you can see it come apart. Hmm. Boy. All right, I just take something. This will work. Put this in the bottom. Guys, you can use a vise, all kinds of ways to do this. This is just how I do it. And I usually use a pocket screwdriver to pick. I'm going to pick this right here. Just work the little clip out. All right, let's move back to the bench. All right, guys. All right, here's the one we just took the ring off of. Little cap, larger spring. And what you want to look for is basically this hole here. All right, here we go. This hole here, you're looking for where in the between the shaft and this. That is really tight. I mean, it slides, but you know, it has a little drag to it. Now, if you were able to take this and move it side to side a whole bunch, or you could go in here and actually look and you see wear marks, or you can look on the shaft and you see it worn down, that's going to be a hydraulic leak you need to throw it away. However, this one's in pretty decent shape. Now, this does fit a pickup. It's the uh, basically a 553 designation. It fits most trucks, Tahoes, SUVs. Uh, they've used the same thing in almost everything. The Corvette is actually a smaller diameter. I believe the designation is a 962. When I say designation, that's the last three parts. There are the last three uh, numbers of the part, and it's stamped on every one. Easy to find. Now, if I was putting a shift kit, most shift kits will have you grind notches in this plate here. The reason the notches are ground into it is so it will not actually hydraulically lock or, or fill with fluid, because I told you this is also an accumulator. When third gear is applied, it's going to push back on this. And if you have it, you know, kind of hydrolyzed with fluid, there's no give, so you all of a sudden you got a bang in gear. So that that's the reason is, you know, to quickly take off second gear and it doesn't drag in second gear. So anyway, I'm not putting a shift kit in this one for that type of shift kit. All I'm going to do is clean this up. I'm going to reassemble it for you. And hopefully you can see how the thing goes together, how it works. And I've kind of eliminated all the questions on the uh, 2.4 servo and a 4L6DE, okay? Bye -bye. Guys, I lied to you. I am putting a shift kit in this one. He did actually buy it. So I'm going to go grind this real quick, and I'll show you exactly how it come out. And we'll go from there. Back all right, guys. There. Sorry about that. I really thought I was putting a shift kit in it and then apparently the customer changed his mind. All right. Remember I was talking about the grooves that you cut into it? It's not all that difficult. You just grind four little sections, just like so. Nothing to that. And the shift kit, all right. The shift kit's gonna add a extra spring. 
you have this one comes in it and you have the strain that the shift kit comes in and of course this now what I like to do is take my shaft and put it in there that way, that way I know it stays centered when I press this together all right, we're going to move back to the press real quick. I'm going to press this together and we'll reassemble it. Wham, back to the press. Now guys, all right, so we put the spring in. You can see, you have your four grooves, you can see them. That's just so oil can escape. This here is Move in there in a second. Alright. Lose, everything's good. Alright, let's go over here and put this thing together. I promised this gentleman I'd have the same by the weekend. It's going to be done by the weekend, my God. All right, so we're back to the servo. We have this together. Got a spring. All right, guys, sorry about that. Put a little thing right there. And a e clip. Basically the same way you took it apart, just like so. And it will move up and down freely. I mean it's got spring tension, but that's it. Just zoom out a little bit. Alright. Now we need to put some seals on this thing. Call it good. So I go to the overhaul kit. seal. I like to kind of fold it so it's good and tight. And then set it in the groove. Alright guys, you see that? You see where it meets right there. Perfect. All right, now find your next seal. And guys, there, there's a bunch of, you gotta understand, there's a lot of these seals in there. It's for different servos, different size servos. I think there's three, but the two most common is the one we're doing right now and the Corvette servo. All right, see that? Perfect. We'll take this. Remember, this is the one that actually goes in the case. It's not the cover. It gets the red O-ring. You can see seals are pretty tight. Stays together pretty well. Your fourth piston. Got a seal on. This piston goes into the cover. The little the machine side goes up. It's got a large knob here. It goes inside the cover into that recess. Okay, just like so. Blue O ring on the cover.
boom. This is a return spring. It goes in the case. There's a boss in the case that this actually fits in. It kind of goes over that and goes right there. You slide it in the case, nothing to it. Now, there's one other thing. These shift kits, most of them love for the band to be extremely tight or as close to tight as possible. You know, a slight drag without it actually holding the drum. They give you the shim. The shim goes right here between the cover and the housing. Just like so. And basically, okay, guys, guys. So basically that's the long and the short of the 2.4 servo and a 4L60E or 700R4. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. Like I said, rebuilding one is really quick, really simple. Now, if you're looking for a firmer shift or a quicker shift, you can upgrade to a Corvette servo. Like I said, this is a truck servo. Or if you even want more than that, they sell some aftermarket servos. Uh, I've installed a few, and they work really well. They, they make very firm, quick shifts. If you're building a performance transmission uh, and you're using a 700R4, you, you'd want to go with a better servo and a little bit different design. Uh, like I said, the, the servo here is a little smaller on the uh, performance servos and it makes for a very firm, quick shift. If you have any questions, Anything that uh, you want to know that I've left out of this servo video, which I cannot see how I left anything out, but it is possible. If I left anything out or you have any more questions about this, please leave me a comment. I will do my best to answer your comments and get you the information that you're looking for, okay? Uh, as always, guys, I appreciate you watching my videos. If, if you like this type of content, Please let me know you like it. You want to see this type of stuff. I will be glad to make more videos like this. If you have any questions about a transmission or a car or a tool that I've used, leave me a comment. I will be sure to do whatever you know type videos you would like to see. If you like this content, please subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, I would deeply appreciate it. And always, thank you for watching. Hey guys, one other thing. Uh, I know this is last minute, but I was thinking about it and I found this in the overhaul or the uh, transmission shift kit page. You know, I showed you how I pressed the little cover off the uh, servo. Well, in the instructions, I'll put this here so you can see it, they use a, a vise and a socket. That will work just as well. I just kind of wanted to give you some other ideas. You do not have to have a press, but if you're wanting to do this, this will work, okay? You could also use a hydraulic press. You just don't get carried away, of course. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. All right, guys, I just wanted to add that to what I've already done. Uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.